I've, I have your, I'm going to do the training on my login. And then at the end of that, we'll log in as you actually, yeah, let's do it that way. And then, then I'll configure all your dashboards and all that good stuff uh, towards the end here. So, um, okay. Get the right screen shared here. Too many things open. There it is. Okay. You should be able to see my screen. Yes, I can. Okay. So when you first log in, a couple things to, to check. And this is this view you can get on your phone, your computer, iPad. This is so I'm logging in through the the Galileo website, and I'll send you this link here. Um, so you have that, and then your, your username and password. So when you open this up, um, you'll come to this dashboard screen or this, this screen, and I'm going to go ahead and configure this dashboard um, because I've never logged into your controller, so my dashboard isn't configured either. Um, so we'll click on these three little blue um, buttons there on the side, and then we can choose what we want to um, look at. And I kind of know the ones I like, so I'm going to go ahead and select them. Um, all sensors, all fertilizer pumps. We'll select the flow meter, and we'll select some sensors. And then I'll show you what, what all this means here in a second. Okay. Um, so, okay, so all these little widgets started popping up here, and we have this gear symbol. So you hit the gear symbol, and we select the water meter. We just have one water meter to choose from. On this one here, we have the sensors, and we want to choose the, the pressure in on one of them and the pressure out on the other one. Mm -hmm. And then we can also put a third sensor on there, um, and this is basically just a calculated difference between the two. So it's just going to show what the differential pressure is right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then as long as we hit save here, then that next time we log in, then these same things will show back up. Um, so if we had things running right now, you know, it would be populating the the flow, pressure in, pressure out, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. And then it would show the program we had running down here. Up here at the top, um, toolbar at the top, we've got some alarms. So these are, you know, if there if something goes wrong, there's either faults or alarms. Um, and there's there's a whole bunch of configuration settings that we can change what those alarms do when they happen. Um, but just know that they're all going to show up here if there is an alarm. And what we're seeing here is there's basically uncontrolled water, meaning there was water flowing when the controller didn't think there should be, which makes sense because you probably turned it on. They ran some water to test some things before there was a program wrote. Same thing mm -hmm. on the fertilizer. There's been some fertilizer ran through that says, hey, there was uncontrolled fertilizer. Um, and, and so it ran when it wasn't supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel those and get rid of those. Okay. Um, and then if we have programs working, um, it'll, they'll show right here, the, uh, programs on hold. So right now the controller is paused. So we use the pause feature, you know, anytime it rains, anytime we want to shut down and check something, you don't want to stop a drip controller and then restart it because what happens if you if we went in and told it to stop which we can do that if we go to manual operation here we can say stop the sequence or stop the program then when you go to restart it's going to start back over at the very beginning of the program and so the pause feature is is what we primarily want to use so that when you start it back up it starts back where you left off does that make sense okay. sure so so this this pause button right here um, is where you push to to pause it and then to unpause it we would just hit end pause and it would say are you sure you want to end pause so that's how we would turn this back on um, if everything's in auto I guess that's one thing we'll need to verify is that once you're ready that that everything's in auto and, and we could you can take over from the controller okay so that's the dashboard um, there's a few other things I'll get to in a little bit that you can show on the dashboard that's pretty handy, but that's kind of the, the main configuration of it. 
Um, the map feature, um, we don't have this set up for yours yet. Let me just jump to another one though and show you what it'll do because um, it's pretty handy. Um, basically, it gives you a visual of what zone is running and, mm -hmm. and where the zone layout is. Um, so this is a system in Iowa. And, and so you can see it shows all of his zones. And then um, I don't know if he's watering today or not. It might take a couple minutes or usually takes about 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds for him to update. And then it'll turn colors, the zones that are running. So yeah, he is watering. So this should update here in a second and it should show us which, which zones are on. Right now there's a little bug in the thing where it's only showing the first zone out of the set of zones that are running. Yeah, which is happening right now. So it just turned purple. So that mm -hmm. means he's fertigating zone one and he actually has probably eight zones on so there should be eight zones that are colored um but because of the programming bug it's only showing one but that just gives guys a quick visual this is like a 400 acre field um so mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to keep track of what's on and off but that that's what the map features for is to show you um show you what's what's on and off um and it's blue if it's watering purple if it's fertigating and then red if there's an alarm on that particular zone Okay. Um, the next button here is the tab or the programs, um, and that's probably where you'll spend most of your time um, changing things, configuring things. There's several different ways to look at the programs. This first one that pops up is kind of their new dashboard. Um, I'm kind of still getting used to it. There's a we'll go into that one first, and then I'll show you a couple other ways to view it. So basically, if you click on a program you you get this um, general settings and the um, the important thing on the first program that you have listed it has to be there has to be a trigger that tells it when to start so this is this is what timing means is when do you want the program to start so we have timing and then we go down here to this schedule settings and we tell it when to start and how to start. Like we could set it up on a weekly schedule and say Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday, we could do it on a cycle of zero. That basically means it's going to run every single day. And this program is going to start at 12.01 AM. So um, that's, that's how we're triggering it to start. And then if we keep going down, um, how do we want to water? This case, we're watering by time, which is how we do most of them. You can also do it by inches. So you could say, hey, I want to put out a quarter inch of water or I want to put out an inch of water or whatever you want to do. PHG means thousand gallons. Um, it, they use that reference a lot. I don't we don't ever use it. So just be aware wherever you see THG, that means thousand gallons. Okay. Um, so this is set for 12 hours. The water before the fertigation kicks on we usually set those at an hour and the water after we set those for an hour as well to make sure when we shut the system off there's we're not shutting it off with fertilizer in the lines um and then when you're ready to fertigate this is where you'll go in um you have the the easy dose it's just that one pump and you can select what method you want to fertigate on so right now it's set on gallons per acre you can also do it based on time you can do it on total gallons or you could do it on a ratio. Um, most guys are using the gallons per acre, and then they're just going in here and saying, I want to put five gallons per acre on, and and then it will turn that pump on, apply five gallons an acre. So we, we've configured how many acres are in each zone, mm -hmm. and so it'll it'll automatically turn the pump on. So, so for example, I put in five, and now it just updated this, and it says that's 131.8 gallons are supposed to go on on that set of zones now i didn't point out up here so the set of zones in the program we choose right here so we have um and i think carlos maybe did this already um, we have zone 1a 2a 3a and 4a and to change that we simply click in this box and let's say we want to run just zone 1a and that's the only thing we want to run so we just get rid of the rest of those mm -hmm. and now and now that's going to update that information if i hit save and give it just a few minutes or a few seconds it's gonna it's gonna up recalculate this this fertilizer number based on how many acres are in zone 1a so mm -hmm. it's kind of constantly doing that math the brains for this are on the actual controller in the field so the the brains are inside that gray box 
So anytime you're making save or changes here, it's transmitting it to the controller, controller's doing the math, and then it's kicking it back here. So one thing I forgot to point out, whenever you log in, you wanna look at this Wi-Fi signal up here in the upper left-hand corner, mm -hmm. that should be blue. If that is ever red, that means we've lost the cellular connection. And so anything you see is not gonna be, at, it's not gonna be current. It won't be, it won't be live information. So just be aware, always look at that Wi-Fi signal and make sure it's, make sure it's blue. Okay. So, so yeah, there are fertilizer now changed to 32 gallons because we changed it to just, just zone 1A. Mm -hmm. so, to, so to stick those other zones back in, we click on that second box, we want 2A there. Third box, we want 3A. Fourth box, we want 4A. Um, so pretty pretty simple to add and subtract valves. You can you can change those valves that you have open and close in the middle of a program. Like let's say you're, let's say in this 12 hour program, all of a sudden you say, hey, I've got something wrong in zone four. I just want to shut zone four off. You could come in here mm -hmm. and delete zone four and it would take zone four out of the program and shut it okay. off. Or if That's you wanted good. to add another valve. Yeah, I was going to ask if I needed to pause the program, but it can be done without pausing. Right. You can change valves without pausing. You can change fertilizer quantity without pausing. You can do pretty much any any changes to the program. It'll it'll allow you to do that. All right. Occur to take effect immediately. It's about sixty seconds. I would say thirty to sixty seconds. It's pretty quick. Yep. Okay. It's not like one once that cycle ends. Right, correct. It's not once okay. the cycle ends. Yep, it does it during during the cycle. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the the programming side of it. Let me show you the other views. Um, in the multi-program one is the other one I use. This is the one they had last year, and so I kind of got used to it. But the advantage of this is is it allows you to see everything on one screen. So here's program one. Here's program two. Um, and so we can see that program one is all the A zones, program two is all the B zones. Um, we scroll down, um, they both start at, well, the one starts at 12.01 a.m. And then the second one follows it. I didn't point this out before. So I mentioned earlier that the first program in the sequence has to have a, a time associated with it of when it's supposed to start. All the rest of them need to, that, that you want to go in sequence, they need mm -hmm. to be set to following. And following basically means you want it to to kick in as soon as the first one gets done. So we could write we could write ten more programs, and and just set them all to following, and it'll just go right down the list, and then it'll come back to the beginning and start over. Okay. Um, so we can have two uh, two hundred programs. I mean, there's lots of different ways we can configure stuff here, but that's that's pretty much the ones we use. It's just the you know I'm guessing in your situation you might have two maybe three or four programs. Let, let's say you have some programs that you want to periodically use and then and then you want to shut them off. So mm -hmm. you basically you can just change them from active to inactive. And so let's say here you want to just do zone 1A and 2A and you want to do um, I'll just throw some examples in here and you want to turn the fertilizer pump on and give this a uh, let's say a one gallon per acre shot of a micronutrient. I'm just theorizing here, okay? Mm -hmm. And and so, I lost my scroll bar. So if we set that in there and we're gonna water for six hours um, and we'll set this to follow as well. So it's gonna happen right after program two, even though it's not right against it, that'll still work. Um, so we we run it and then we decide you know what i don't want to run that anymore so we you can just flip this to not active and gotcha. and hit save and it's still in there so if you go back and reactivate that one it's still there um so you can kind of save programs turn them on and off and use them use them when you when you want to mm -hmm. so. okay okay um shut that one back off Okay, um, so that's the irrigation side of it. Um, there's several other views you have here. Um, this program set up, there's a few, a few things in here that like some alarms, for example, like how long do we want to wait before it shows that we have an overflow alarm? And this one, we usually want to configure this to 20 minutes because for the first 
20 minutes of turning the system on, we, we're going to have high flow because it has to fill all the tape up. So that's that's an example of of some of the configuration that that for this first little bit, we'll try to get all these configured for you. But as you have alarms, we can go in here and kind of tweak those and, mm -hmm. and figure out exactly where they need to be set. Um, oh. It has it has defaults. It puts in all of them. Um, but there's things we can tweak on all that. OK. Um, fertilizer programs, you really won't use this with the type of fertilizer pump you have. It's it's going to be much easier to use just the this this part right here in the programming where you select the pump, you put in the gallons per acre. Um, the, the fertilizer center is like if you have three or four fertilizer pumps making your own blends and different mm -hmm. tanks and EC and pH control. So and for this situation, you probably won't use this at all. The, okay. the fertilizer, this this fertilizer tab, you won't use. That's bad. So. Okay. I primarily use go into the irrigation tab, and then that's where I would set up my fertilizer parameters through the pump. Correct. Yep. Yep. You'll just go right there, and and you know gallons per acre or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you want to set up. I guess I should zero this back out. So have your fertilizer going all. Your tank will be empty when you go out. <laughs> um so that's the that's the irrigation programming i guess any questions about configuring that and turning it on and off it's pretty pretty simple once you do it a few times right i'll just have to go in and play with it a little bit and and, yep. and i guess that looks fairly straightforward um what i don't know is what what is the right way to do it as far as the you know how how much water should I put on how often things like that which I realize we're not yeah. covering early today but I'll need to to learn more about that too sure yep yeah this is a pretty sandy field is that right am I remembering Correct. that right mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. I would probably do six hour shots and do mm -hmm. two of them like that would be I probably wouldn't do a full 12 hour set or maybe even a four hour set would be better Brad has more experience on the sand than I do Actually, Kurt, I got his design pulled up um, three hours, um, gives him a 0.13 inches uh, at a shot. Okay. So he's 0 0.044 uh, per hour. Yep. So, yeah, three, three or four hours at a shot. So I'd, I'd want to do and hit it a second time during the day if we need to. Yep. And so then the other thing we'll back down, we our, our standard default is is one hour water before and one hour after, but that's not going to give you enough time to get your fertilizer out. So I'm going to back these down to 20 minutes um, okay. before and after. Um, gotcha. Just because of the, the cycle time. So yeah, I would say those shorter run times, doing it more times per day. So so the way you can do that, you, you there's two different ways to do it. You could write a second program that has this exact same stuff in it, or you can simply say do this twice per day on the cycles per day, and then it'll mm -hmm. it'll do that more than once per day. Sure. So, okay. Um, so let's say it'll do program one, it'll follow up with program two. Then it, if we do it twice per day, it would follow up again with program one later in the same day. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Good. Yep. So let me match. Yeah. Just so I understand that the, the cycles, if it's zero, it'll run once a day. Um. Yeah. It doesn't. I think it still runs once a day, even if it's on zero. Like. I should look. Hold on. Let me look at another one where we don't use cycles. Um. Just to verify that. much simpler to set up than a NMC junior. Oh, it's yeah. Okay, yes, it does need to be on one. Yep, if it's on zero, I think you're right, Brad. I think it won't run at all. Okay. These are all on one. Yep. I don't know if I'd paid attention to that. So it, it must default to one because I don't think I ever go in and change that. Okay, um, the manual operation tab, sometimes you'll maybe want to use that if you want to start a program, stop a program, open a valve, do a manual flush. That's one thing that, that you can do in here is say, hey, I know my filters need to flush. Let me just go in and make them flush. Select. It's going to be filter unit one 
program one and then that's going to include all of your filters so that's got all going to happen inside that filter flush one it's mm -hmm. in the controller and it's going to try flushing it it's it's out there clicking solenoids now but since we don't have any water going it won't nothing's going to happen mm -hmm. okay um the calendar feature works uh pretty decent the only thing that's a little bit confusing on it is when you when you have programs that follow it makes it look like they all have the same start time um and so oh, okay. it'll it'll basically show like in this case it's going to show program one and program two side by side and and uh but it but just know that the second one's going to follow the first one so um it does it does work to look at okay. the calendar and see what you, what's all running um it's taking a little bit to load i'm not sure why but refresh here That's odd. You're trying to go again to his system now, Kurt, or were, were, were we actually on his uh, training? No, we're still on my login, but we're on his system. But this is the this is their whole website it just went down. Make sure it's not my internet connection because I didn't lose the Teams meeting. Um, let me see something here. Well. see what's happening on the web or on my app as well here Okay, it was something specific to the calendar. When I went out of the calendar, now it's working again. Hmm. There must be something something not working on the calendar. Well, maybe not. The app is working still. Let me just, I'm going to hop on my phone here as well and show you the app quick. Well, I'm guessing okay. the web's going to come back up. But... That's fine. just so you know you know i mentioned earlier that that everything is stored in that gray box so if if the website goes down or if the modem goes out and you lose connection the 
the controller still continues to operate and you actually there's a there's a built-in bluetooth inside the controller and so you can take an ipad or a phone and go out and directly connect to the controller without going okay. through the website so okay. um just so you know that's an option okay it's back now so that has never happened to me before so odd that it happened during the middle of a training but <laughs> we're back all right um okay so the, like i said the calendar i'm not sure if that oh, there yeah now the calendar's showing so um we have everything on pause so i don't think anything's going to show up till we take that pause away um so it knows that it's just on hold right now um so it, nothing's showing up here now but if it was running you'd be able to see see what's on the calendar and, mm -hmm. and look at it accordingly the system setup you won't need, necessarily need to go in here a lot but if you want to go in and check some things or tweak some things you can um, mm -hmm. irrigation valves basically is where we went in and configured like how many acres are in each block um, mm -hmm. which we got this off the design that that john maxwell did so if there were some changes um, that that could be tweaked a little bit um, one thing i'll note is notice how all of these are blue in color up here if mm -hmm. if we if we go to the program and we take out one of the valves out of the program that um when you go into irrigation valves it will turn colors and it will be yellow so basically it says this valve isn't assigned to any program so there you can see i took zone 1a out and mm -hmm. now it's yellow meaning meaning it's not assigned to any program gotcha. um, so it's kind of just a quick check that says hey this this isn't included anywhere Mm -hmm. um and it's not going to get water so um so that's one place you might go um to to look at something and set up the other one that um that you would use is the filtration battery so this is where you can go in and tweak the filter settings and also look at how many times it's flushed so there's there's a setup tab then there's an information tab on the information tab it shows how many times the filters flush today how long it's been since the last time it flushed and and then all the other settings that are down below here so um yeah this is somewhere i'll go if if i'm just checking to see hey are the filters working like they're supposed to right mm -hmm. now he's got a pressure differential of 12 pounds i'm going to change that to eight but that's something that you can tweak like where do you want it where do you want that spread out of pressure before it triggers a back flush um, this is another setting i usually set up so basically how long do we want the pressure differential to exist before it triggers a back flush that's what this mm -hmm. 11 minutes is we don't want it to go through a back flush and then immediately trigger another one um, we want we want to give it some time to fill the pipe back up and and kind of balance its pressure out before we before we trigger another back flush so those are some settings that you might look at you know obviously this is stuff we especially this first year we'll be watching these as well um, so mm -hmm. if there's tweaks like that that we come in and we say hey this thing flushed 30 times today you know something something's not set right or there's an issue mm -hmm. that we need to need to address um, and, and how often should i or how often should i check that to see how often it flushes um you know the first week maybe check it once a day but then okay. if everything's kind of balanced out then i would probably only do it if you notice hey this this thing's flushing all the time um okay. Yeah, if everything seems to balance out good, and I'll show you in a little bit here another place to to watch that. Um, there's okay. a couple other settings. Um, fertilizer pumps. In your case, you just have the one fertilizer pump. This is where we mm -hmm. configured the flow meter for the fertilizer pump, like how many gallons per pulse on the fertilizer meter. Um, mm -hmm. This uncontrolled fertilizer. So this is this is where, and I'm going to set that at 10 for now, and I'm going to set this no fertilizer pulse to 300 seconds. So this is a, a fairly common alarm that pops up, like if the fertilizer meter continues to spin a little bit after the pump shuts off, and that's set too low, it'll trigger an alarm or it'll a fault in this case. Um, mm -hmm. And then if the pump takes a little bit to get primed and started pumping. Um, you know and it was set at 180 seconds that's basically three minutes i like to give it a little more time before it before it quits trying um sure. is what those those settings are um these other three you won't use sensors um so this is where the pressure transducers are configured mm -hmm. um 
and trying to remember out on your field do we have a radio yeah we've got a radio here is that right and then a radio oops i'm not showing sharing my screen hold on share the right one here so you can see what i'm pointing at okay do we have a radio at this valve bank and then a radio at this valve bank yes we do mm -hmm. so two two radios or is there three there's two um, there's two okay uh, these two are that's hardwired to the close one uh, yep. by the pump. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So one of the things we can do, and we're actually waiting on some sensors right now, but we can tie a pressure sensor to every one of these. Well, each radio has the ability to tie in three pressure sensors mm -hmm. so that we can actually measure what the pressure is when this valve opens. So we mm -hmm. know whether it opened properly, did it close properly? Um, in this case, it's not a super big field, so it's not really, maybe not as big of a deal, but um, it's still really handy to know, like, did the valve open, did it close, mm -hmm. um, and and what does that look like? So that's something that um, we don't have configured because we're waiting on those sensors. Um, long, long story short, we can put a two, we have $200 pressure transducers, and that's what we put on the filters, but we found some, like, $15 ones from China, and so we've been <laughs> testing them, and they they work. And so we've we've been buying a bunch of these cheap ones to put out on the radios just because they don't have to be super accurate, but we kind of like to know if the valves open or closed. Sure, um, sure. So that's something that we can we'll probably stick on there once we get those in. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So I think that kind of these other settings you probably won't use too much. There's a lot of things we can set up in this logic conditions. Um, this is where that. I think there's a switch out there where you can flip the switch and pause it. So that's where this switch is configured is this device right here where it says controller pause. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where if you ever want to disable that, you can come in here and disable it. But um, that's what that's for. Yeah, I, I okay. actually I'm down by the uh, um, by the controller now and there's a just a like a toggle switch. Yes. Uh, pause controller. Uh, and it's currently an unpause. So yeah. Okay. So they paused it. They paused it from the controller then. So um, can we test it right now? Do you mind if I hit un end pause? That's fine. Yeah. Let me just show you what happened. So you want to end pause it? <clears throat> yes. And we'll give it just a few seconds here. And that red bar is going to disappear. And let's go open up the dashboard again. And you'll notice that it now we have a working program here. And it says all beans are irrigating zone one, two, three, four. It's got 10 minutes and 44 seconds left. And then as it pressures up, um, it'll we'll start seeing pressure and flow. Is your is your well switch in auto? You have a uh, I don't are your so VFD? The uh, let me the, the disconnect for the well is off. Let me turn that back oh. on. Yeah, go ahead and flip that on. Yep. Yep, got that on. And then um so the VFD had been in, in auto when we were testing Matt. I don't know what Tyler did since we left. Okay, it's ramping up now. Um so you should be seeing pressure real soon. Yep. Yeah, we got five okay. pounds here. Yep. We should start seeing some flow on here pretty quickly too. Looks like there's a delay. Uh, I'm showing about 14 psi. I see yours is ramping up to eight now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, probably 30 second delay if I had to guess. 30 to 60, depending on cell yep. connection. That's yep. Fine. Yep. Um, one question I did have as far as so um, the well is doing very well. Um, Anyway, um, I know in your plans, there was a certain amount of gallons per minute projected or, or expected, and, and the, the flow meter is reading quite a bit more than that. Is that, is that, does that have to be calibrated, or is that okay, just even though it's flowing higher than specs? Like how much higher? Well, like right now, it's flowing right around 400 gallons per minute. Yep. I think in most cases, I think it was on your plans, I believe it was around 130 gallons per minute per zone. Right. 
Right, but we so got four, we, got we four have four zones, zones open. So it should be so. Yeah, if you look here on the on the computer, it should be flowing 515 gallons a minute, if if it can support all all four zones. Okay. So, did yeah? What what is the capacity on the well? It, is it 515 or not? No. 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 Okay. Okay. So we need to go in and rewrite some programs then, because right now we've got too many zones open. We probably need to go down to to three zones at a time instead of four zones at a time. Mm -hmm. okay. Does that make sense? So we're trying to water too much, actually. Right. And exactly. Mr. Kurt, what he's got is four of the zones are corn and four, four are beans. Okay. Uh, right. For, for simplicity, in my brain and Matt, you tell me different. I'd go two corn and two beans, or excuse me, two at a time, two corn, two corn. And then two beans, two, two beans. That's kind of what I thought too. That way we have plenty of water capacity, and yeah. uh, I think it'd be a good idea. Yep. So but let's Kurt, just I, hop. I, yeah, I agree with you. We we can do, we could do three zones and, and probably have that capacity. Um, one forty times three, four twenty. Uh, what's your well spec, Matt? I know it was over three hundred. You told me, but it's probably not four hundred. I think it's. You mean what's it spec'd out at? Yeah. Well, I think it's spec'd out um, right around three, low threes, um, but it, it generally runs around four or just under four. Sure. And then that's probably because we've had extra zones open as, as you've tested. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably not, I probably wouldn't want to stress that, that well, and I'd probably go two zones at a time. Yep. Okay. I, I, that makes sense. And then I think we'll have plenty of hours in the day to run it. If we do two zones at a time and just have one program follow another, I think we'll yep. be fine. Yep. Do you think the beans need as much as the corn does do right, right now, or do you want to? Right. That's the other thing too. Right. This time of the year, I'd rather give the water to the corn. The beans, right. um, you know, uh, they'll be more of a later summer when they really need it the most. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I my thought would be is if you set the the corn on two cycles maybe and the beans on one time mm -hmm. per day might you know for yeah. three did do the corn four hours a day twice the beans one or three hours a day once would probably be maybe a good a good starting point yeah yeah um, it sounds like a good idea um i, I don't want um I, you know once we have moisture there i don't want to like let's say on the beans i'd, I'd rather run it a little bit every day so we don't mm -hmm. lose you know we don't want to dry it out completely you know right right yep yep Okay. okay, so I'm just going to go in here. We're going to add two cycles a day to those corn zones. And then let's turn on this one here. And this needs to be, just do this quick. And those are following and we'll set this for twice a day as well. Set these at three hours. So this is where I like this multi-program tab because I can change all the programs right here in one, mm -hmm. one screen. Oops, I'll shut this off till you're ready to fertigate. So, so pro program one and program four is, is corn, Kurt? Yep, correct. Yep. Okay, yep. And, you, and, and we can relabel this so we can say corn one, a and 2A, and then so you can change these labels then by year. You know, next year if these are different, you can change change mm -hmm. to different labels and kind of keep track of what you're doing. Right, right. Okay, and I noticed so. the uh, flow rate is down to about 220, 230 now. So maybe possibly the changes you made have adjusted that. Yes, they would have because it closed two valves. So we had four valves open. And uh, for a okay, we'll save this, and I'll go back to the dashboard. And so probably what happened is our pressure has built up now. Yep, we're at 33 pounds of pressure coming in, 29 going out, and the flow has backed down. So, um, so one thing that we probably need to double check if our flow is a little bit lower than it should be. Um, probably need to double check that these pressures at the field are where they're supposed to be. So if let's see, let me share the design again. 
Um, so here on the design, uh, there we go, it's showing now, it should be. Um, each one of these zones has a pressure that it's supposed to be set at. And if those are dialed a little bit too low, then your flow is not going to get up to this 130. Um, okay. So that'd be my the first thing I would check if the flow is running just a little bit behind where it should be. Um, that's probably that maybe that maybe is set at 18. It's going to irrigate uniformly. You're just not going to get out quite as much water per hour as what you're supposed to. Um, so these calculations, this 130 gallon a minute per zone and 0 0.041 inches per hour was done at a 22 pounds of pressure coming through this valve right, well, this valve right here. So if if that pressure goes up or down, these numbers change. And would I check that pressure at the with the Schrader valve? That's correct. Yep, at the Schrader okay. valve there at the valve. And then it's got that little blue um, dome on it where you can, you can turn, you have to push down on the dome and then uh, clockwise increases the pressure, counterclockwise decreases the pressure. You have to unscrew I see, the screw okay. first. Uh, oh, you, really? shouldn't, mm, you shouldn't have no? to. If you push down just right, you can get it to grab a hold without unscrewing the screw. Oh, really? Yep. Yep. Okay. Should be able and to. And then, okay. Um, yeah, I see the Schrader valve right next to the pressure regulating valve. And, um, and that's where I would dial it in so it matches your plans right the, yep the engineering yep okay yep okay one other thing i'm seeing here though matt i think you probably should check and make sure all the aqua teeves are in the auto position so there's those little blue boxes right um so we're sitting at 130 gallon a minute which tells me one of them is in the closed position um okay so we probably right. and now we can, tell them to do the same thing Kurt. yep We've had enough guys out there in the last uh, two weeks. Yeah. To make sure everything's uh, up and going. So um, I just checked zone four A and B. Those are both in auto position. I'm okay. going to check uh, zones two and three right now. Okay. Yep. Which one and two are the one and two are the ones we're running. One A or excuse me, oh. one B and two B are the ones we're running right now. One B and two B. So, okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay, I'm just approaching the controller for zone two. I hear a lot of air. Uh, let's see. To be. Okay. Yeah, both uh, 2A and 2B are in auto. Three's in, everything's in auto. I do hear a lot of gurgling coming out of 2B right now. Is it gurgling or would you describe it as a pressure regulator? So so there's a basically you've got 30 pounds of pressure in your main line right now, and that valve is squeezing down and restricting it. So there's only probably 22 pounds going out. So you're probably yep. it should be making a fair amount of noise just from that restriction right now. That's probably what it is then, because it's that large uh black uh flat yep. regulating valve. Um, and I can actually feel the vibration uh, yep. as it goes through there. So it's just the re probably like say it's the restriction of the water. Yep. Uh, like a Venturi type thing. Right. Okay. Yep. I'm going to walk over to zone one. Um, while I'm walking, um, I know that if I remember right, um, of course, iron can cause uh, problems with the tape, but is also manganese is that correct that's correct yep okay so yep um some of my soils are, are low on manganese and um should i not fertigate with like a liquid manganese product um no that's a different manganese so i mean it's 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 the element manganese but the fertilizer manganese does not cause problems um okay I, I can't explain why, but basically what happens from a well standpoint is, is it, if it never got oxidized, it, it would be fine going through the drip line. But when it comes out of a well and goes through the pump and through the drip system, it becomes oxidized in that process. And that's when it starts to cause problems. So, um, but the I fertilizer okay. source manganese is okay. Well, good. That's, that's the answer I wanted to hear. That's good. Yeah. 
Okay, actually, um, zones 1A and B are also... Everything is in auto. Is 1 making noise? Um, 1B is, yes, making some noise. Not quite as loud as 2, but yeah, I hear I hear the flow. Flip it to open for me, and let's see if it changes. Okay. Okay, 1B is open now. Sounds It sounds the same. Okay, so I'm wondering if that pressure regulator is just turned way too far down. Um, mm -hmm. Like it's it needs to be like it may be set on like five pounds of pressure or something, and it needs to be adjusted down. Would probably be the first thing I would check. Because so if it's I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I increased the pressure on the regulator, and um, now I hear a lot more noise. Okay. Yeah, our flow just jumped up. Yep. Yeah, so that one may have just been. So maybe the. Yeah, it may have been too. The pressure may have been set too low, possibly. Correct. Yep. But so I can always, like, say I can take a Schrader valve, go from zone to zone, check the pressure, make sure it meets the specs on your engineering plans, right? That's exactly right. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's easy. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. And I, I know two and four are the ones. We were working on two weeks ago, Matt. I had those set real close to 22, but we were still working on one and three when when I left. So just double check everything out there, make sure we're we're at 22. Yep, I can do that. And here on the controller, so during this process while we were talking, we just got an alarm that says low flow rate program two. Um, so it recognized that something was wrong and, and threw an alarm. It can, it's continuing to irrigate, but it just, um, well, actually it went to another, no, it's, it stayed on that zone or those zones. I'm sorry. You can, you can set up different things to where if it throws an alarm, does it go to the next set of zones? And it, it has not done that. It's still on that, um, one B and two B. So. Okay, good, good. All right. I'm walking back to the well now so so a couple other things i wanted to go over here on the on the controller dashboard or on the the interface um, that you'll want to use um, the reporting feature um, there's a lot of different reports in here and i'm actually in the process of putting some videos together how to use those the one in particular that i that that you'll want to probably set up and I'll, i already have a video put together on this one um, so if you go to reports and hit add report, you can either do it as scheduled or static. Um, the scheduled means it's going to happen um, however often you set it up. And so we're just going to call this one water and FERT flow weekly. And so we'll, uh, you can choose what time period you want to look at. And then you, you can put your email in here and every morning it will it will run that report and email it to you. Nice. Um, so you can filter it by valves. In your case, that's how you would do yours. You would select all your zones and then you would choose what you want to see. Um, in this case, you'd want to see your water and your fertilizer. And then we hit save settings. And then you can just click on this report and there's these little drop downs here. And so you hit the drop down and then it will show you how much each zone has ran. So basically, some of them ran for 19 minutes, some of them ran for 13 minutes. It says there was a little bit of fertilizer pumped, maybe through a test, I'm guessing. Um, but this this is a really nice report. Um, you can hit you can export it to Excel, you can export it as a PDF. I think the email that you get will be the PDF version, which looks like this. So it's a you know, just a quick summary of what happened. Um, and and what ran, how much ran, how many gallons of fertilizer you put in each zone. And again, you can summarize that however however you want to, as far as time and zone. And so that's a really good little report that I like to run. Um, mm -hmm. The alarm the alarm log. So if you want to go back and say, hey, what you know, even if you clear the alarms, they're still going to show up in here. So this is where um, we had that alarm um, at 2:45 this afternoon, zone one B and two B, and it was a flow alarm. So. Mm -hmm. We've cleared it, but it still shows up here. So you can see the history of all the past alarms. That's gotcha. it. Yep. Can, can we go to that date and change that date, please? Um, right here? Show, yeah, it's on, show on January 7th. No. <laughs> so 
That's the they they do it day, oh. month, year. Okay. So yeah, and okay, I don't think we can change that. Okay, yep. No. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've gotten used to okay. it, but. <laughs> Sorry. It's the beauty of international business. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, Gal, just for your reference, Galcon is located in Israel also. They're based okay. based in Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other one that's really handy is this graphing feature. So if you go to graphs, click the three little buttons there. Um, usually I do a three-day graph as kind of the, the window I like to look at things. Mm -hmm. And then you can click on, on sensors, for example, and we can look at pressure in and pressure out over time. And mm -hmm. you've got some straight lines here because the system was off. But now that it's running, you can see, um, you know, it was running yesterday, it looks like, for a little bit, around 7 p.m., that running when the controller was on. Obviously, you were probably running it before that. But um, over time, as you run it and the controller is on now, you'll start charting your, your pressures in and your pressure out. So okay. that's really handy to look at that three-day, and then you can save this. So save it as three-day pressure, um, hit save settings, and now the next time that you go to graphs, it's already there. You just click the button and it and it'll load the it'll load the graph for you. So you don't have to go in and reselect it. The other really neat feature is you can go to save as widget. Mm -hmm. And now when we go to dashboard, you can and you can re reorder this dashboard, but now that same graph shows up right here without even having to go to graphs. Okay. Um, and if you hit the edit button, you can move these widgets around. So if you want to, you know, the graphs are probably one of the most useful things there are in my opinion because when you log in you're seeing what's happening right now but the graph shows you what happened over the last day or two or three um, sure. so i really like using the graphs um, you can also graph the flow um, so if we go let's do last three days um, and that's under this water counter cyclic data it's kind of an odd it's not very intuitive what they call it but the water meter is underneath underneath that and so there we can see the flow um, we were at 400 gallon a minute, then it was off, and then it just draws this line to the next plot that it pointed. Mm -hmm. um, next point it plotted, I didn't say that right. Um, so here we can put in three day flow. The, the one, so you can put flow and pressure on the same graph, but on the widget, they only allow you to graph two lines. So if you're gonna okay. put it on the widget, I usually do a, a pressure and a flow one and keep them separate. Um, the other thing that happens when you put pressure and flow on, you kind of lo you lose your um, label over here. They give preference to one set of labels and you lose the other one. So um, sure. usually I just do two, two different widgets. So those are the ones I use a lot. Um, there's other ones in here that, you know, when the pump was on, when was it off, um, the fertilizer. This, you know, a lot of these are just on off type graphs, so they don't really give as much, but the, as much data, but the, the flow and pressure are super valuable to be able to monitor what's going on. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions on that? I think that's kind of, I mean, the rest of it's, I'm not even sure this stuff will show up on yours, the installation and account settings. I think that'll, that's just on mine, but. Um, sure. No, actually, I mean, the, the software looks very, you know, user friendly. I, I like the layout. Uh, I'm just gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna take a little time for me to get used to it, figure it out. But I think it looks yep. really good. I like the monitoring aspect. That's really nice. Um, yeah. I guess some of my questions relate. Um, so, let's say um, I know there's some alarms that can be tripped, um, or or maybe flow issues. Let's say I develop a leak in the field for some reason. Yep. What um, what parameters am I going to see or or look for on that? Yeah. So. It depends on the size of the leak. So what you'll see in this flow graph, for example, is your flow will go up. Um, and it. so if you have one tape leak, so that one tape leak, that's about five gallon per minute. So you're probably not going to be able to pick that up on a on a chart. Um, but if you get because there's going to be like when let me just show you a controller that's been on for a few days here just for for. Uh, context um let's see okay so here's one that's been on for three or four days and you can see like you know there's little 
peaks and valleys and you know it's not just super consistent but if all of a sudden there was a stair step where you know the flow went up 50 gallon a minute in your case you know this is a 700 gallon a minute system or 600 you know it's really hard to see even a 50 gallon a minute where you'll probably see it but it's not going to be significant mm -hmm. um so that would be what i would look for is a stair step in your flow if all of a sudden something broke now if okay. there was a if there was somebody hit an air vent and it you know had a two inch line blowing 100 gallon a minute then that would be a very obvious um, stair step and that's where you can set in those alarms to mm -hmm. to trigger it if it's you know i think right now they're set at 50 percent higher so it would have to be a 100 gallon a minute leak before it would trigger that alarm which is probably a little bit too wide. Usually, I think on the Netafim controllers, we used to set them at 20% extra high flow. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of tweak that and kind of tighten those up if you if you want to. Okay. Um, these, and I guess this is another good one to sh show here because, uh, let me pull this up on a bigger, bigger graph. So right here is the pressure in and the pressure out. All of these dips, I think we're flushing this based on time. So this mm -hmm. is, these are all the flushes when this pressure drops during the flushing. Mm -hmm. um, or you'll, and then you'll also see a change when it, um, when it switches valves because your pressure is gonna drop every time you open up and change valves. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go to one that's pulling out of a river here. Um, so here you can see the, so the top, the dark green line is his pressure in, the light green mm -hmm. line is his pressure out. So every, so you can see he slowly plugs up and then it flushes and then the pressures equal out then at mm -hmm. this bottom line it slowly plugs up flushes they get equal so that's what we want to see um can't ex i can't explain what was going on here i'm guessing he was testing something but there were some you know big gyrations in pressure and then things got normal again so mm -hmm. um that's just you know signature of river water or a dirty well is going to do something similar that one i showed you before was a clean well and so we mm -hmm. just have it set to flush based on time Gotcha. Um, okay. So. Okay. Um, another question I have. So obviously we've got in uh, like a processor here. Is there any kind of surge protection built into the Galileo that you know of? Um, as far as power surge. Power surge, like um, of course everything is. We're bowling here to a, a big metal. Yeah building you know and i'm thinking lighting strike something like that i don't know if there's, I don't know if there's any yeah. protection i could either add or should add so usually we put a so there's a first of all it's it sends 24 volt is what the actual controller is so there's a step down transformer that it's going through that's that little black box that has the actual plug-in on it mm -hmm. i would put a surge arrestor between the plug-in and that black box just a regular power strip um, if you want to be really safe, you could put a battery backup like you would use for a desktop computer True. in between there. Um, but yeah, there uh, it would be a good idea to put just a simple surge protector in between those. Okay. Um, yeah, I see. Um, so there's, um, let's see, it's plugged in here. Like, see, the black box is plugged in. There's a, a couple uh, converters here. So basically, I could just come off of this main outlet and put in like say a, a UPS there, yep. search protection and plug all that stuff in there. And then um, that should be one one more level of protection, I guess, or at least right. one level. Yep, okay. Yep, yep, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Because I, I don't imagine this stuff is cheap to replace. <laughs> so. You know what, I've actually never had one get hit, but um, yeah, <laughs> so I can't actually answer that question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never had to replace one yet, so. Okay. Um, um, let's see. Another question. Uh, actually, these are kind of related. So, there's it looks like there's a wireless modem here. Um, yes. And maybe I can get this from Tyler, but um, I assume there's like a username and password for that. Um, for the for the modem itself, uh, the password is on the bottom of it. So yeah, if you want to use the Wi-Fi on there, um, mm -hmm. on the there's a sticker on the bottom that gives you the the password um, to, okay. to get into that. Yep. And, and I guess that's another thing. If you have Wi-Fi close by or internet close by, we could get rid of that modem um, if you have a if you have a more reliable source. I mean, that's one thing. This past week, we had probably five or six of those. We had to power cycle. Verizon had some issues with some SIM cards. So 
that will be one of the maintenance, I shouldn't say maintenance things, but it's one of the service items that sometimes the modem will get, need, a, need a power cycle. So anytime we can tie into a more reliable um, internet connection, we try to do that. Okay, yeah, our, the, the current um, uh, internet we have here is not the best. Supposedly they're gonna upgrade it, but I'm not holding my breath on that. So I think for okay. now, I'll just continue to use that wireless modem. Um, okay. And then um, also uh, related to a login, um, I assume for Galileo, there'll be a login and like a username and password for me. Yep, I will text that to you here shortly. So I'm so so you're I'm actually putting it on the screen here. Your login is your email, and then I'll text you your password. So gotcha. your your username is is just your email, and then I'll I'll text the password to you. So I'm going to go into yours right now and just configure your dashboard real quick and make sure everything looks looks like it should. Okay. Um, so again, check those little, the Wi-Fi signal there means we're connected. Um, and then, yeah, your dashboard is blank at the moment. Pops up a few messages here. And then we'll grab working programs, um, fertilizer pumps, all sensors monitoring. Those are the main ones. And then, see that one's not very good. This one. Because this is something you just set up one time and you don't have mm -hmm. to do it again. So mm -hmm. just do this real quick. Okay. So now when you log in, this should show up for you. I'll just grab a, one of those graphs here real quick. So that's on there as well. Save that as a widget. Do a flow on here also, three day flow. Okay. And it only allows one user at a time. So if you, um, it, it, whoever logs in second will bump the first guy off. So if you share it with, you know, someone else that's helping you, or yeah. uh, if there's more than one person in the operation, if you want another user, I think they're like $140 a year for a user. So you can have as many as you want, but um, just be aware that if you try sharing it, you'll be bumping each other off. There's no okay. issue with that. You can do that. It just, yeah. Um, if you okay. logged in right now, it'll it'll bump me off. So right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then um, you're going to basically go through and set the parameters as you think they need to be set, right? So I, um, like, like you created that uh, on the dashboard, you created that chart. And yep. so you'll, you'll kind of set everything up um, how you would you do it. And then I can modify from there, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, another unrelated question to that, um, on top of the easy dose controller, um, there it's not hooked up, but there's a cable and it looks like a float valve to me. Um, I don't know if that's something that just came with the kit and the guys just left it here or. Oh, it's a, a float switch. So yeah, we do not hook those up typically. So basically what that is, is if you can put it like in the bottom of a 55 gallon drum or a tote, yeah. and then it would have got empty, it would shut it off. Gotcha. Um, so it doesn't uh, float. It sits in the bottom, and then if there's liquid on it, it'll run. If there's not liquid, it'll shut it off. Okay. Um, uh, and I, it's not hardwired, but I'm sure I can figure that out easy enough. Yeah, there's a. There, I we usually don't use them because most guys are hooking their fertilizer up to a 1500 gallon tank, or you know, yeah. that three eighths hose that comes off there. It's got a screen on it. Usually, just clip that off and hook it to a two inch banjo, so you can hook it up to any kind of tank. Is typically how we set it up. Or have yeah. guys plumb them in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Good. Um, yeah, I think that's all the questions I have. Um, is there any way, uh, since you're recording this anyway, is there any way you can forward me a copy of this? Because that way I, can I sure it? will. Yep. That'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I took notes, but you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I will get that. I'm going to email you that login and the link. The The app for a phone or an iPad is called Galcon Cloud. Um, okay. There's if you, if you just typed in Galcon, you'll get lots of options. Um, but the one for either a phone or a 
or an, an, an iPad is called Galcon Cloud. So sure, is it Galcon or Galileo? Um, Galileo Cloud. I'm sorry. Galileo Thanks, Brad. Cloud. Yep, okay. Galileo Cloud. Yeah. Yep, I just looked at mine. Good catch. Good. And dog, let me email you this information here too while we're. Okay, well, yeah, any any other questions were available? Car do you have Carlos's number? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's so I mean he the reason he didn't do the training is because he's swamped right now in the field trying to get stuff done. But yeah. he's probably better than I am even at configuring things like alarms and how to change settings. Um he's really good at that. So um okay. feel free to text, email call whatever you need to do um either carlos or myself and brad will brad will be getting up to speed on this as well so it'll be <laughs> well yeah. you can come down here and play with my system and, and yeah and learn with that <laughs> yeah yeah um, for, great for me kurt username and, and password you'll, you'll send those out to me or carlos with uh, yep access I, to my growery. I just got it here so i'm going to send it to you on whatsapp brad okay no perfect I, Good, that good. way I can watch Matt and, and Matt, if yep. you got questions, let me know and I can, uh, I can help you. Yeah, and I thought too, Brad, you know, um, we can, uh, if need be, we can uh, do some tweaks and stuff like that, but it looks very straightforward. So I guess, again, my, my, I got two things. I need to learn the, the, the software and, and the system, but also I need to learn more about how to operate drip tape irrigation because that's, also very critical so um, you know because we're getting the we're, yeah we're getting some showers coming through which is you know i forgot what rain was like but anyway um as we're getting some rain